All right, folks, we're doing another video over here. Uh, today I'm going to show you how to properly design a residential water well pump system from the ground up or from the ground down. Okay, let's assume we're building a new three bedroom, two bathroom house and we need a water well. Uh, first thing we need to do is figure out how much water we actually need. To do that, we're going to use water supply fixture units, or WSFU. This is a general system used for figuring plumbing sizes and water usage and so forth. Based on a WSFU chart, each fixture in the house will be assigned a number to later be added up and then converted to gallons a minute. So first we'll list all the plumbing fixtures that will be in the house. Then using the WSFU chart we'll assign a value to each fixture. And then once that's done we simply add them up. Then using the WSFU to GPM conversion chart we'll come up with our demand in gallons per minute. So our we round up to the WSFU which is 30 and that comes out to be 23.3 which will round up to be 24. Now that we know what our demand is we can tell the well driller what we need and hopefully he can get it. Uh, for this demonstration we'll assume he does. In fact our theoretical well ends up 200 feet with 30 gallons per minute recovery. Yay! In a drilled well the water will come up the casing and stop when it reaches its static level. In this particular well, we'll say it's 50 feet. Once you start pumping water out of the well, the water level will likely go down some. Sometimes a little and sometimes a lot. So whatever the water level goes down to is called the pumping level. We're going to need to know what that is, and the driller should be able to provide that information to us. In this case, we'll say the pumping level is 60 feet. Next, we can figure out what size pipe to hang the pump on and run into the house. For that, we'll use a friction loss chart. That'll tell us the velocity at which different volumes of water can move through different sizes and types of pipe. It'll also tell us what our friction loss is, measured in feet of head per 100 feet of pipe. So we'll get to what that means in a minute. Ideally, we want the velocity to be around 5 feet per second, but not more than 7. So if we look at the chart for 1 inch pipe, uh, the velocity for 24 gallons a minute is 8.9, which is more than 7. So we'll go over to the inch and a quarter chart, and for 24 gallons a minute, they list 25. So for 25, our velocity is 5.4, which is good. We also want to take note of the friction loss in plastic pipe, which is what we'll be using, because we'll need that later, 9.06. Next, we're going to figure out how much pipe we're going to need. Since we know the pumping level is 60 feet, all we have to do is set the pump deeper than that. 20 feet below the pumping level is usually a comfortable buffer. So let's set the pump on... 80 feet of inch and a quarter schedule 80 PVC. From the well to the control room in the house we'll say is 20 feet. We'll need to know that when figuring the friction loss which we can do now. Adding up the run to the house and the drop pipe length we get 100 feet. Our friction loss is 9.06 feet of head per 100 feet of pipe. So since we have 100 feet of pipe our friction loss is 9.06 feet of head and we'll get to head in a moment that's what she said now to figure out what pump to use we're gonna have to figure out our TDH which is total dynamic head total dynamic head is the sum of three values head pressure and friction loss head is simply the vertical distance between the pumping level and the highest point of the water system for simplicity's sake, we'll just say that it's the well tank in the basement. And it's measured in feet of head, oddly enough. In our case, it's 60. 
Our friction loss is already in feet of head, which is 9.06. Now the system pressure we're going to run at 60 psi, we'll say. That'll have to be converted to feet of head. So 1 psi equals 2.31 feet of head. So all we have to do is multiply 60 by 2.31 and we get 138.6. So when we add our head friction loss and pressure all together we get 207.66. We'll call that 208. That is our total dynamic head. Okay we're finally getting to the pump selection part. For this we'll have to look at some pump curves. Now, I downloaded these from Gould's website. Every pump manufacturer will have pump curves for all their pumps. Generally they'll be sorted into different GPM ranges and you use the curves to determine which horsepower motor you're going to need. These curves always have a range of optimum efficiency as indicated by these lines here. You always want to stay in this range otherwise your pump won't be as energy efficient as it could be. So you simply draw a horizontal line at the appropriate TDH and a vertical line at the appropriate GPM and you use the curve that is as close to this plot point as possible without going under and bingo you've selected a pump. Selecting a tank is pretty simple. Each captive air tank will have a drawdown rating, which is the volume of water used before the pump has to turn on. And a rule of thumb is you want the drawdown gallons to be about the same GPMs as what the pump is going to be pumping, in our case 24. So we would want something with as close to a 24 gallon drawdown as we could get. So there's no harm in oversizing the tank, however undersizing the tank could shorten the life of the pump. It's also worth noting that oversizing the tank will not increase your pressure. It will only increase the cycle time. And we can talk about the importance of cycle times in another video. Now, I think it's important to mention that although technically this is the proper way to size a system, realistically it's a bit overkill. Most guys would probably get away with throwing a half or a three quarter horse in there and it would work just fine. So do with this information as you will. So that's it folks. I obviously didn't cover every possible scenario as there's too many to cover in a single video, but this is just a basic guideline for designing pump systems. I'd be happy to field any questions down in the combat section if you have any, but for now, I gotta go. Adios.